Here are a couple ideas for workflow best practices, or at least some ideas for ways to manage larger courses. So let's say your storyboard is complete, and whether you're storyboarding it in, say, PowerPoint or Word, it doesn't really matter. But uh, let's say you've got this you know, fairly large course. You can see this is a course that I once worked on. You have a lot of uh, level one, level two, and level three menu topics. Now, one of the challenges is getting in there and going into slide properties and then having to manually change all those different levels. So if you have a course that's 100 plus slides, which, you know, it happens, you have to go in here and pretty much change the slides one by one. So, you know, when you first create your course, mostly they're all set to level one. They're always set to level one. And then you just go in and make those adjustments on a, uh, a slide by slide uh, basis. Now, there's a couple things you can do, though, to speed that up. So if you already have your menu structure set up, whether it's in PowerPoint or, say, in Word, I typically work from Word just because I like to have a high-level view of the course. One of the things that you can do is actually go in, and here's just a brand new document, and start building your initial course structure, right? So when you first create a slide in PowerPoint, and then you open up slide properties and articulate, that's going to be set to level one. That's just the default, right? There it is. Well. What you could do is go through and create all your level one slides, right? So I'm just going to look over here, uh, gatekeeper, I'll hit next one, observation, and listening. And let's just do one more, listen and follow orders. All right, so if I open up slide properties quickly, I can see that all of these are slide one. Now what I could do, and what I would do if it was a larger project and I was uh, hadn't gotten into PowerPoint yet, so I come in here and I can create a new slide. Now this new slide is still going to have a level one, but what I could do is go into slide properties, take this slide and then just change it real quick to a level two, go back, and let's say I was doing the observation and listening, which is I guess, what, this, this one right here. So this is set to level two. I can add the title for the first one. Let's just call it body language. At this point, anything I time I duplicate this slide, it's going to retain that level two. So I could duplicate it, what, one, two, three, four more times. So one, two, three, four. All right, so it still has that menu. But I can come in here now and change each of these. And the benefit to doing this is that I'm, I'm, I'm still going to have to do this anyway, right? So no matter what um, process I work for, what workflow I work with, um, time of day, I'm still going to have to name these. But I kind of like the idea of setting up the core framework of my course for the larger courses, uh, goings on. And this is fine like that. So if I go into slide properties, you can see it. But I like the idea of having this sort of this, this uh, blank slide and then having this whole course menu. So you can see it already retained the sub-levels. I already know what levels are going to be because I worked on the script and I've gotten you know, the necessary sign-off on it. So I don't have to go in there except for the nuance changes that will occur during the development process, but overall, going to have my structure and of course you'd first want to set up all your master slides so you could you know make any slide layout adjustments in there so just an idea for a way to work with um, a larger course especially with a lot of sub levels if you're just working all on level one it doesn't really matter but uh, just consider setting up the framework in the course uh, based on the menus and at least you have a, a published version you can just go and populate the slides uh, one by one so hopefully that's a, a helpful idea and uh, good luck